In this example we have a channel that is 0.5 meters wide so the width of the channel B is 0.5 meters the flow depth in the channel is given to us and that is 0.25 meters so our flow depth Y is 0.25 meters. We're told that the slope of the channel is 1 in 200 so for every 200 meters the channel moves in X it's going to drop by 1 meter and the roughness of the channel uh, Manning's n value is 0.022 and from those parameters the question is asking us to calculate the velocity of the fluid in the channel and ultimately the discharge. So if we start by thinking about our principle of continuity, we know that the flow rate is equal to the velocity times the area of the fluid. So that's our kind of starting point in thinking about these problems, which in the context of a rectangular channel would be the same thing as saying that our velocity is equal to the width of the channel times the flow depth. So your width times your flow depth is going to give you your area. The problem we have with continuity is we have the area of the channel, so we have the width and we have the depth, but we don't have the velocity and we don't have the flow. So we've got two unknowns when we try to solve this using the continuity equation. So if we ultimately want to get our Q, we're going to need an equation that is going to relate u to the parameters we've been given and the flow depth and that equation is Manning's equation so Manning's equation tells us that the velocity in our channel is equal to the hydraulic radius of the channel to the power of 2 over 3 times by the square root of the slope of the channel divided by Manning's n which gives us the roughness of the channel so this is the equation that we can use to solve for our velocity and then once we've got our velocity we can solve for our flow. So in this equation we've actually got most of the terms we need, we're given the slope in the question and we're given Manning's n in the question so the only thing we need to calculate to work out the velocity is the hydraulic radius. And the definition of the hydraulic radius for a, a channel is the channel's cross-sectional area divided by the channel's wetted perimeter. So whenever we do Manning's equation to work out the velocity or the flow we need to work out the hydraulic radius which is the area of the flow so that's the cross-sectional area of the flow divided by the wetted perimeter. So the wetted perimeter is the total length of the side of the channel that is touching water. So it's the total length of material on the side of the channel that's touching water. So if we wanted to formulate these two parameters, our area is obviously going to be the base of the channel times the width of the channel. So that's quite a straightforward parameter to think about. So our cross-sectional area is just going to be the base of the channel times the flow depth to give us the cross-sectional area. The wetted perimeter is the total length of the size of the channel touching water. So we're going to have the whole width of the channel in that equation because the whole base of the channel is touching water and then we're going to add that to one flow depth on this side because this depth of channel is touching water and one flow depth on this side so we're going to add that to 2y so the total length of the side of the channel that's touching water and giving us resistance is going to be y plus y plus b which is the same thing as b plus 2y. So the cross-sectional area is going to be width of our channel times by the depth of our channel which gives us a cross-sectional area of 0.125 meters squared. Our hydraulic radius 
is going to be 0 0.5, which is the width of the channel, plus two times our flow depth. So we're working out this length here, the total length of sides touching water, so two times y plus b, which gives us a, hydro, a wetted perimeter of one meter. So our hydraulic radius is going to be our area of the channel, 0 0.125 meter squared, divided by our wetted perimeter, which gives us a value for R of 0 0.125 meters. So we now have everything we need to do the calculation for velocity. We've just calculated R. So to work out our velocity, it's going to be R to the 2 over 3, so 0 0.125 to the 2 over 3, times the square root of the gradient. So we're given the gradient in the question as 1 over 200, so square root of 1 over 200, divided by Manning's n that we're given in the question. So Manning's n is 0 0.022. That gives us a velocity in our system of 0 0.8 meters per second. So the velocity of water moving through our channel is traveling at 0 0.8 meters per second. And now we've got the velocity, we can work out the flow. We know that the flow is the velocity times the area. So our flow is going to be our velocity times by the cross-sectional area of our flow, 0 0.125 meters squared which gives us a flow rate in this system of 0.1 meters cubed per second. So if we want to work out the velocity and the flow rates in a channel where we're given the slope and the roughness, we need to first use Manning's equation to get the velocity from the parameters we've been given, and then if we times that velocity by the area of the channel, by the cross-section area of the channel, we get the final flow.